I guess we can start now. Uh, it's okay. Okay, as I, I first welcome you all to the new semester and the new subject. And uh, thanks to your interest uh, for this elective. Uh, title of the course, as you know, is Hypersonic Flow Theory 15 AES442. Today's session will uh, just dedicate for um, understanding about the course and the plan for delivery. So we will not get into the the topic as such today. Tomorrow onwards, we'll take into the we'll get into the actual uh, syllabus, the portions. <clears throat> okay. Uh, first about the course objective. The objective of the course is uh, listed as uh, the as the one to enable students to appreciate the difference, differences and commonalities between supersonic and hypersonic flows to introduce basic physics of hypersonic flow and their applications in space shuttles, atmospheric re-entry, scramjet engines and other practical situations and also to understand and apply the uh, apply ex approximate and exact methods in hypersonic flow theory. In fact, the, the last point that is understanding and applying approximate and exact methods in uh, hypersonic flow theory that spans over the entire course. So even the points that were listed above, that is to introduce basic physics of hypersonic flow, etc., they are all done in tandem with or in parallel with understanding and applying approximate and exact methods in hypersonic flow theory. So how, uh, what are the tools used or how they are formulated in hypersonic flow for analysis is what is being primarily focused in this particular course. Uh, I'm not listing the entire syllabus here, uh, just to give you a brief overview of the three units, unit one, unit two, and unit three. Unit one is primarily introduction to hypersonic flow and flight paths and um, the various regimes. And uh, the unit two, actually, um, the way that I have written here is the way it is given in the syllabus. In fact, the way that we address in the class will be sort of, there will be a lot of uh, overlap between unit, unit one and unit two in particular. For example, in visit analysis, uh, we will start that in unit one and we'll continue that in unit two. Anyway, that is going to be the second part. And the third part is primarily method, study of method of characteristics and uh, blunt body flow, problems flow, heat transfer, viscous flow and heat transfer in hypersonic flow. So this is roughly the division of the major topics. Uh, in the present, in the slides, I have given the complete syllabus, which you can go through at your leisure when uh, after I uh, share this on MS Teams. Uh, so, course outcomes. Uh, course outcomes, as you know by now, uh, the what are a students supposed to accomplish by attending attending this course? So, from the student's perspective what he or she will be able to will be capable of doing after undergoing this course successfully is what is usually listed as a course outcomes uh, so co1 is identifying critical flow physics and phenomena uh, influencing hypersonic and planetary re-entry flows co2 uh, explain should be one should be able to explain the recent developments uh, in the analysis of hypersonic flows co3 be able to apply, uh, say, shock expansion theory, various approaches, surface, uh, surface inclination method, Newton's theory, etc., for the estimation of pressure distribution on simple shapes. Uh, these are applications of the, uh, or rather, uh, these are formulations of fundamental analysis methods for hypersonic flows. CO4 is formulation and uh, solving of problems involving inviscid hypersonic flow over blunt bodies. And CO5 is the study of viscous effects and being able to analyze and identify viscous effects in hypersonic flow applications. So this is how the five objective, uh, five outcomes of the course are laid out. CO1, CO2, CO3, CO4, CO5. This is how they are laid out. Uh, now, uh, to give an uh, overview of the, the course content, this uh, the follow, the 
the plan that we will follow uh, in the course would be first we will have a brief, brief introduction to hypersonic flight the the various phenomena that are associated with hypersonic flight basically features which are unique for hypersonic flows and their applications and then we will look at the various analysis methods for hypersonic flow assuming in visit models or and uh, with the assumption of inviscid flow now in phase inviscid flow as we will soon see has a lot of importance in hypersonic flow applications because many of the uh, pertinent physics can be captured or at least we can get better insight to the problem by for, by inviscid formulations so inviscid forms formulations are important particularly in hypersonic flows and we will also uh, briefly discuss about the method of characteristics as applied to hypersonic flows and uh, we will look at the effect of viscosity because in the initial parts we are constrained to inviscid approach and later we will also look at what is going to be the main impact of viscosity and heat transfer so i have not listed it here uh, viscosity as well as heat transfer in hypersonic flows textbook john d anderson's uh, hypersonic high uh, hypersonic and high high temperature gas dynamics is a good textbook actually so, um, uh, yeah, that is listed as a textbook and it's a, it's a fairly good uh, treatment of hypersonic flow the various methods methods of formulations and their applicability their disadvantages shortcomings and uh, strengths etc so it's a good textbook and um, there are other textbooks you don't have too many books actually in hypersonic flow being uh, somewhat <clears throat> focused domain uh, as not unlike a uh, general domain you don't have too many books but then there are several reading materials and i will also be making use of uh, journal articles papers etc in the course in the while in cover, while covering the topics of the course so what we have listed here are the uh, the sub, the textbooks which are listed in the syllabus Fletcher's uh, fundamental software uh, hypersonic flow error dynamics is also a good one. Now, mode of uh, delivery, as we know, is going to be online sessions until there is any uh, dramatic improvement in the COVID situation. So, for what we can see now, most part, most part of at least most part of this uh, current semester is going to go into continue online uh, mode. Then. Uh, obviously we'll follow the uh, presentations and the must team sessions for the lectures and short quizzes will be there after a series of uh, sessions that's not every session but then after a series so when when a particular topic is covered i usually used to have as a, a follow up uh, online quiz so which means that for each module you are likely to have multiple quizzes and uh, there is an interactive session as you know which is uh, uh, for um, uh, which is um, for uh, reserved for um, saturdays or saturday sessions are reserved for uh, qa so though they are optional whenever you have any questions or doubts or anything to be clarified or anything related to be discussed about the course we can make use of that slot uh, now performance evaluation um, yeah what i understand now is that it's a 50-50 um, split and uh, the end, end semester is 50%, whereas uh, the internal assessment will consist of quizzes, uh, assignments, and um, midterm exams. Uh, apparently, there is going, not going to be P1, P2. This is what I just heard from uh, the students. So some of you only told me this morning uh, who attended uh, uh, everything in this course. Otherwise, I was under the impression of P1, P2, but uh, apparently there is an announcement which I am yet to see. So once that uh, is formalized, so once we get that information, I will confirm this. So if so, there is going to be a midterm exam plus other uh, other constituent con components like users assignments, etc., which will make the 50%. And the next 50% will be in semester evaluation. Now. Uh, when I say quizzes and assignments, I would uh, quizzes will usually no, follow the normal pattern, but assignments I would try to make at least some of them as presentations by you on given problems, which may have a, a bit of a design flavor or analysis flavor, where you extend whatever has been where, where you extend whatever has been discussed in the top in the class to specific situations or specific analysis 
for specific applications. And I would uh, probably make a few teams where you can do the presentation and the evaluation will be based on the presentation. So that that will be, I mean, we cannot have too many of them uh, because of time constraints, but whenever wherever it's possible, I would like to uh, assign such tasks, which will be more like presentation kind of uh, submission. <sighs> okay, now for uh, each class, uh, as we know, the MS team sessions will take uh, some time. I would try to restrict it to 15, 20 minutes. What I have here is a pie chart, an exploded view of a pie chart, which is something like a, a rough time division that I have in mind. Now, there will be variations from time to time, etc. but this is what I roughly target for. Uh, I want to constrain my talk to 15, 20 minutes uh, because of the attention span in the online sessions. Uh, it's globally suggested that it should not exceed. A person talking should not take more than 15, 20 minutes because after that, students are likely to lose, uh, very likely to lose their attention. So uh, this is what I keep as a guideline for myself. But I see myself wavering from that quite often uh, because of two reasons. One is overall syllabus pressure, of course. We need to come back, uh, we need to uh, finish the portions uh, as much as possible uh, within the st stipulated hours. Second is when there are lengthy derivations or equations to be completed or analysis to be completed, etc., it becomes uh, ineffective or inconvenient to split it across sessions. So one would try to finish it as much as possible uh, in a given session. So those things usually uh, uh, stretch the targeted 15 minutes to, uh, to longer periods, which I, I, I will try to minimize that, but then um, often I see that I exceed that 15 minutes. So, so 15 to 20 minutes I anyway keep as a target for myself. Now, what do we do after that? Yes, QA sessions. Um, uh, that is that is in addition to whatever that optional session on Q, uh, Saturdays, I strongly encourage that after each session, if there is anything that is not clear to you, uh, it may be ambiguity, it may be uh, a doubt, or it may be lack of uh, uh, explanation provided by me, or it may be even mistakes uh, which were mentioned by me, you can, you can take them up all in the QA sessions. And uh, needless to say, the discussion should not be reserved or delayed till QA sessions. Whenever you see anything that is not clear, even when I am talking, whenever you see anything that is not clear or is ambiguous or wrong or uh, a mistake or a slip of time, anything, you can, you are, you can, and you are requested to stop me and raise your doubts or concerns or suggestions. So uh, please keep that in mind. Any time during the talk, you can stop me to raise a doubt or a, a concern or a question or a correction. So, uh, but then uh, this only thing, uh, remember to unmute yourself before you uh, speak. So otherwise, what I mean by the QA session is the, the one after each, uh, each class, each talk, you can, we can have some minutes dedicated only for discussion. So whenever you have any doubts after the session, you can raise them also and uh, numerical problems. That is, uh, we will have a few sessions where we'll, be att we'll attempt uh, numerical problems. What I would suggest is that as I explain the problem or as I try to work it out on the uh, live on the screen, I would request you also to be parallelly doing that because unless you work on it, you won't get a feel for the solution of the problem. So uh, solving of the numerical problems are actually is to be expected by, to be done by you and just guided by me. Uh, but I will I will be presenting all the steps and most cases I'll be presenting the results also. But I request you to be uh, parallelly working it out so that uh, if there is any lack of clarity in what I am saying, it can be cleared also at that point of time. Uh, and also you, you become more confident about working out problems. <clears throat> Pieces, as I mentioned, will be there time to time. And whenever uh, anything that has to be presented by you, we will make use of part of this 15-minute uh, session for your presentations also. So, and also some uh, videos, with, uh, which I think I have not listed here, but I have it here. Yeah, in the pie chart, I have it. Uh, I have, uh, I have 
listed some video which are actually available in youtube some of them uh, you may have even seen also but from time to time to explain some of the concepts or their applications i'll be making use of videos these videos will not be lecture videos lecture i can give myself but then uh, the uh, graphic demonstrations of them uh, either uh, with actual videos or of applications etc that's where i require online uh, resources so i have made a collection of them and depending on the topic that we are talking about if there are useful videos which can uh, which can give us a better insight to the real application of them i'll be making use of them also so uh, the, that's what i mean by videos in the time uh, time share pattern time share uh, model so this is roughly how i i would envisage utilizing this 50 minutes of uh, each session uh, again emphasis would be to have to restrict my talk uh, not exceeding uh, a reasonable time limit so that uh, we will try to make it as interactive as possible but then that interactive part of it comes only from your side i cannot do much about it so, uh, uh, other than stopping and asking you to raise questions queries etc so unless there are uh, questions or this ones from your side. Uh, we cannot make a uh, make it interactive anymore. So please keep that in mind. So this is the time division that I have in mind. Syllabus. I don't. I'm not going to read it out. Anyway, we are going to go through all that. And for your interest, you can go through the syllabus, etc. And the platform, though I don't, I didn't mention here. All the materials that I present here, I'll be uploading in MS Teams. Uh, many times I will uh, upload it the, on the same day or in some cases a few sessions will be required to complete a part. So if so, after that session is complete or that, that is after so many sessions are complete, I will upload the total material. That is if, a, if one particular topic requires multiple sessions to cover after the all, all those sessions are after that particular topic is completed, I will upload the uh presentation on the uh, on ms teams so that you can subsequently use it so this is uh, roughly how i would like to proceed through the course yeah i guess i'll stop it here yeah so already i have it's about 15 minutes i think since i started talking so for now i'll stop here uh, you please uh unmute and if you have any questions or concerns or also suggestions just take all this. Whatever I say for, are from my side. Okay. So I may have some reasons for putting it this way. I may have some reasons for arguments for uh, splitting the time like this. But it, you you have all the right to correct me or uh, raise your suggestions or your, give or give your suggestions or raise your concerns. So uh, please let me know if anything has to be changed or also if you have any questions or any further clarifications required i stop here um, uh, you may please unmute and talk I guess we have a class tomorrow. So what I would actually start off with is talking about uh, hypersonic flows as such. What do we mean? By, I, it's not that you don't know what you know. You all know what is hypersonic flow, but uh, I'll try to formally place it uh, from the theoretical as well as application perspective. So that's that will be my aim tomorrow. Uh, before we start talking about analysis and other things, we'll try to place hypersonic flows from the perspective of uh, what what is categorized and why it is categorized and what are some of the applications so that will be the focus of what we discuss tomorrow next class okay sir yeah anything else that you want to ask or suggest this this course as the name indicates um, 
is says hypersonic flow theory. So uh, this it deals with a lot of um, formulations and analysis that pertain to hypersonic flows. But my I'll be making conscious efforts from time to time to relate that theory to actual application. So wherever it's possible, I'll try to highlight the application of it. And we may uh, attempt to also solve problems as which are very close to the applications of um, each topic. Uh, anything that you want to suggest or um, check with me about the overall whatever we have discussed now? I mean, suggest in the sense, even if you are not confident about what you are going to suggest, that's okay. You can just raise it. Maybe you have a point. If you have a point, then let's uh, discuss it and take it. So what I'm saying is don't don't shy away because you are not sure about what you are going to say. So any any suggestions from that because it's Online mode is actually new to all of us. So we are actually it's just over a year now we are using this. Uh, so and from the student perspective, uh, I have absolutely no idea how, how miserable it will be for you. I know I heard some feedback, but then uh, if, that, if there is anything that you feel you can suggest to minimize or reduce that misery, uh, you're most welcome to suggest that. If it is practical and if it is viable, I will be happy to implement it also. And this is not the only window of opportunity. Anytime that you feel you want to raise something, you can do that. I mean, so I'm just asking now uh, because it's the beginning of the course. But uh, anytime during the course, if you feel that something has to be changed or corrected, etc., you can you can let me know anytime. Okay, uh, if you don't have any questions, then we can we can stop here today and then continue with the uh, sessions tomorrow. Um, anything? Yeah. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Okay, then. Mm -hmm. okay, then. Thank you. Thanks a lot for to all of you for joining. And thank you. Said, yeah, any, any point of time? Uh, the overview that I have given about the course and delivery, etc. If you have anything to be uh, to suggest about it or to make changes, may please let me know. I cannot probably change the syllabus, but anything about the delivery, the mode, the time sharing, and stuff like that. Okay. Sir. okay. Thanks to all of you. Uh, thanks to all of you. Thank you. Sir. Thank, Thank you. Sir. 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 Thank you sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you sir. Thank you. 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 Thank you.